grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we'll be looking at Christ as the witness of God. Christ as the witness of God. The person of Christ is mysterious like you might have heard us say in the past teachings. It's only by the mercy and the privilege of God that God is unveiling and revealing himself to us in the way, I mean, from scriptures. Uh, it's, it's, it, for me, it's a joy to just see it as a psalm of Christ. That is a means of thanksgiving and making melody to the Lord, to God, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Spirit. Who is the witness? And by our day, and um, I mean, the normal common law or our day-to-day -day living in the secular world, a witness basically is someone that talks about the truth or testifies about the truth of a person, maybe in a court or in a different setting. So Christ has a witness. A witness is one who testifies what they know about a person. Usually when someone, when there are doubts about the truth about a matter, about a person, a witness is actually required to come and attest to the fact that they know this person or they were, they were physically there, they witnessed the situation, they witnessed the event. So when we see, and of course the witness is coming from Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and also Revelation 3 14, Christ is the faithful witness, the living witness, the true witness of God. is the one that testifies about the truth about the person of God. Is the image of the invisible God. God is mysterious. God is invisible. He dwells in unapproachable light. But how will he make himself known to man? He needs a witness. And that witness is the Lord Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. The word of God. For God to be known by man, he needs a witness to testify of him. So God needs a witness to testify of him. Without a witness, man cannot know God. Man cannot experience God. Man cannot come in fellowship with God. So God needs a witness and that witness is the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy. To testify is to make a statement about the integrity of a person and his works. Without a witness, we cannot know the truth about a person. So if there is no witness, that means whatever the truth about a person or a matter is unknown. And usually, you know, in the court of law, sometimes they would ask for um, uh, the prosecuting attorney, the defendant, and what have you, they are asking for a witness, someone who was probably, who experienced or who saw what was going on to give an account of what they saw. So without a witness, the truth typically will not be known to us as man. God is truth. God is, uh, God is, God is real. But it cannot be made real to us as mortal human beings without a witness to testify of his reality, of his person, of his truth. And that is why we need part of the reason why Christ has come to us, to witness to us of the love of God, of the mercy of God, the truth about God. Christ is the truth who testifies about the person of God to humanity. That is the truth that testifies about the person of God to humanity. Man cannot know God. It is impossible for man to know who God is without Christ. So let's say to that, Christ is the word of God. Without the word of God, we have no contact. God will remain hidden to us. God will remain an unknowable mystery to us. So Christ is the truth who testifies about the person of God to humanity. God manifested in the flesh. What a joy. Without a witness, God would have no way to make himself known to man. There will be no way for us to know him, just for, for the sake of just illustration. Imagine without the word of God, without God's word to us, which is the expression, the definition, the person, the understanding, the ways of God, the thoughts of God, the person of God to us. There's no way we would know God. We can't just in our own mind be making all vain imagination or what have you. So without a witness, God would have no way to make himself known to us. So the joy today is that Christ has the truth of God, the word of God is the living witness of God, that we can know God. We can grow. It doesn't mean we know everything about God, but we grow in our knowledge of him. It's just depending on how much he shows to us and how much we are properly aligned for him to reveal more to us. A witness also gives testimony about the works of a person. So not only does a witness uh, testify about a person, maybe about the integrity of a person, the faithfulness of a person, his character and what have you, his personality, they also testify of the work 
or the works of a person that look i can attest to this person's work you know there are two different things the person and the works someone could be very nice and wonderful but i mean the work they do might be so shabby <laughs> because they are different areas of their life so christ comes to testify of the person of god and also the works which god has done for us as it relates to man and we can look at a few of those works for example christ is the witness who testifies of god's work in eternity past none of us were with God in eternity past. Only Christ we could say because he said in the beginning was the world, the world was with God and the world was God. From eternity past is the one that testifies to us. That's why when we read Ephesians chapter 1 and we start hearing that before the foundation of the world, before the world was created, God had chosen us in union with Christ to be his sons and daughters. It is because Christ as the word of God has revealed him to us. So he's the one that testifies to us about the work of God in eternity past. He also is the witness that testifies of God's work in creation or of creation the six days of creation all things were made by him through him and for him so it was is the medium through which things were created so as the witness of god it testifies to god's work in creation that let there be light is the true light that gives light to every man so we can see that christ is the witness of god in various aspects there are many things we need to know of god the works of God, the person of God, the nature of God, the character of God, the ways of God, the wisdom of God, so many things. So Christ comes to testify of each and every one of those things about God. So without Christ, we can't know God. Christ is the witness who testifies of God's work in redemption as the Lamb of God, the last Adam, the second man, the seed of the woman, the seed of Abraham. It was through his blood that is the new covenant was consummated. So we can see that it testifies of God's work in redemption. God is the Redeemer. God is the Savior. And he is a Savior and Redeemer through the very person of Christ who testifies of his work to us. What a joy to the person of Christ. Christ is also the witness who testifies of God's work in eternity future. We can see more of this in Revelation 21 and Revelation 22 about the new heaven and the new earth coming, the old heaven and the old earth passing away. I mean about the city where the light is just the Lord himself. It's not the sun that is giving light to it. I mean the mystery of the church. What a joy, what a joy looking up to the new Jerusalem, the city of the new Jerusalem is the one as the word of God that testifies about God's work in eternity future. Christ is the testimony of God to humanity. As a testimony of God is basically the the, the the reality or the visibility of the invisible work of God. That is the testimony. God has done many things for us as humans and as redeemed as a new creation, but we don't know them. It is only in looking at the person of Christ we can see the testing, the work of God. So as the testimony of God, he reveals the work of God to us. We don't know that Christ that God paid a gruesome price for our salvation. It's only as we read the account of the scriptures that the Lord was crucified. So is the testimony of God to humanity. Humanity needs a testimony from God to believe God. Romans chapter 10, maybe I could read it. It said that how shall they, that the Lord is rich to all that call upon him, but how shall they hear except how shall they believe? Romans chapter 10, let me read from verse uh, from verse 12 4 there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved but how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed how shall they believe in whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach without them being sent so without Christ we can't believe we can't believe in God because we've not heard about him and God is saying that this is my testimony the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ only in Christ can we truly see who God truly is. I can read that from John chapter 1 verse 18. No one has seen the Father except the Son and it is the Son that declares in John chapter 1 verse 18. It says, uh, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So, He is the one. Only It is only in Christ we can truly tell who God truly is. Many people have definition and ideas about God. Like, for example, we know of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The testimony they were giving of God was not the accurate testimony until the Lord Jesus Christ came. I mean, they showing us the merciful side of God, the loving and compassionate side of God. So, without Christ, we can't truly know who God truly is. It will just be some vain imagination or some spurious things that are not true of God that another man can be telling us. 
the, all the works of Christ bear witness of God. All the works of Christ in incarnation, his redemption, the signs, the miracles. And if you go through the account, especially of the four gospels and the earthly ministry of the Lord, we can see a lot of things that the Lord was doing. All of them were testifying of the work of God, bearing witness to God, bearing the loving side of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy. So all his works bear witness of God and everything about this person bear witness of God. Christ's work to testify of God's loving heart towards men. So Christ's work testifies. So his crucifixion, his resurrection, I mean everything about his teaching ministry, his uh, going all out for the saved. I mean the parables he was even giving, every one of them was testifying of God's loving heart towards man. Man needs to know God loves him. But man cannot just know for the sake of somebody saying it, but someone has to express that love. And we saw that in the person of the Lord Jesus by reading the account of the four Gospels in his earthly ministry. So God loves man, but God wants man to know that he loves him. So he now brings Christ as his witness that, look, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Christ is revealed as the faithful witness in Revelations 1 and Revela Revelations 1, 5 and uh, 3, 14. I could quickly read that. Revelations chapter 1 verse 5 Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 it says and from Jesus Christ the faithful witness the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth the faithful witness and Revelation 3 verse 14 talks about uh, and to the angel of the church in Laodicea and Laodicea right this thing says the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God so we can see that it's reviewed as the faithful witness in Revelation 1 5 3 and 4 is the witness of the godhead without him man cannot experience the trinity there's no way we can experience the trinity the father the son and the spirit without christ as the witness he is the one that actually reveals the trinity to man he said no one knows the father except the son no one knows the son except the father and is the one the son has chosen to reveal it to we don't know the truth about god the father without christ the son as the word of god expressing him unveiling him revealing him to us we don't know the truth about the spirit except christ himself sending himself in form of the spirit as the spirit of god now the lord is the spirit expect because the spirit is the reality of christ in our life today so there's no way we can have fellowship with the father with the son and with the spirit without the person of christ is the witness that is is the tangibility of that which is invisible or that which is unknown to us as man as it relates to god the father bears witness of him so he's not only the witness of God God also bears witness of him we can see this in John chapter 5 verse 32 John 5 32 and 37 John the gospel of John 5 32 he said that if he bears witness of his own that 532 this was when the Pharisees and the Sadducees were coming at him and trying to find if I 31 if I bear witness of myself my witness is not true there's another who bears witness of me and I know that the witness which he bears of me is true so we need another to say in the mouth of two or three witnesses every truth shall be established we need another person to bear witness of all God himself needs someone to bear witness of him and that is the very person of Christ also John 2 37 as well that as the Father himself who sent me as testify of me, you have never heard his voice any or at any time nor seen his form. The word also testifies of him. That's the scriptures, John 5, 39 as well. Um, you search the scriptures. This was him addressing the Pharisees and the Sadducees for their hypocrisy. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me. So the Father testifies of him. He bears witness of him. The scriptures, everything about the scriptures. So when we come to the word of God, the letter kill it, only the spirit gives life. Without him ministering the content of the word, the life of the word to us, it will just be almost like another academic exercise. So the word of God testifies of him. The spirit of God also testifies of him in John chapter chapter 15 verse 26 said I will send the spirit from the father and when he will come he will testify of me John 15 26 John 15 26 and but when the helper comes whom I will send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will testify of me so he bears witness of God the spirit bear it's a coherence you know the person of Christ is very mysterious is bearing witness of God God is bearing witness of him the scriptures are bearing witness of him Christ is the one who bears witness to the person of God so again let's realize the fact that we need to know God I need to know God God wants us to grow in the knowledge of him God wants us as his children to know more about him but we can only know more about him 
when we have a witness and that witness is the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ that's why we see the prayers of growing in the truth he said in John 17 he said that they may know you and also Jesus Christ whom you have sent also grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ so increasing in the knowledge of God as much as we know the witness of God we know God himself if we know Christ you know God if you know God you know Christ it's a mystery between the person of the Trinity he bears witness to the truth about God there are many things if sometimes people don't believe God is a healer sometimes God people don't believe that God is compassionate God is loving God is faithful to his covenant there are many parts of God the nature of God the holiness of God the kindness of God the long suffering of God the patience of God so many attributes and about this person I mean unsearchable yet we man cannot experience those things those nature those wonderful things of God except God gives us a witness and that witness is in the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ so we know the truth about God the real truth about God I don't know whether not fake truth but the truth about God is known in the face of Jesus Christ in his human living he testify of God by manifesting him everywhere during the fall and the at the ministry of the Lord he was testifying of the truth about the person of God his way of life I mean the the miracles the signs the wonders every one of them was testifying and man he was testifying of God by manifesting him everywhere he said I said these people see signs they will not believe so as he was manifesting God they yeah, the true God is living uh, in his crucifixion in his human living he bear witness by manifesting God everywhere in his crucifixion as well he also bore witness to God's love for humanity people saw wow God really so loved the world to have given his son to have been to die for us that he became a ransom for us even till date we are still reaping the benefits of what he did on the cross of Calvary so in his crucifixion he was still bearing witness to the love the loving heart of God for his uh, for man what a joy in his resurrection he also bore witness to the power of God to raise the dead so everything about him was bearing witness to God. The things he said, the things he prophesied, uh, the things he spoke, his signs, his wonders, the miracle, everywhere he went, he was doing good because God was with him. He was the living witness of God among men. God wants to show he's a good God. He wants he's a healer. How would he show it? He shows it through the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In God has having the power to raise the dead. On the day of Pentecost as well, he bore witness to God's promise to pour out his spirit upon man. He bore witness to that fact because God had promised in Joel that he would pour out his spirit upon man. And on that day, he, Acts 2.32, having received the promise of the spirit from the Father, he now poured out himself in the disciples baptizing them into his body what a joy so every part every stage every phase of his assignment they were all bearing witness to god we needed that witness or else there's no way we will believe god there's no way we will go to the next level of our work with god so everything of god i want to be sure i didn't miss anything everything of god everything god is and has he needs Christ to testify of it to man. So just imagine everything God is. God is love. God is light. God is spirit. God is merciful. God is kind. Everything God is and everything God has. Christ needs, God needs Christ to testify it of man. He's the one that testifies of the wisdom of God to man, the power of God to man, the patience of God to man. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy to the person of Christ. Do God is love. Man cannot experience his love without Christ as his witness. So there are many things about God that will be hidden to us, will be on experienceable if there's a word like that that man cannot experience except there's a witness who, because you must believe you must know in this kingdom he said god said that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge if you don't know about it it can become a reality to you though it is there around you so god needs a witness so once we see the witness or we read about the witness we can now believe and call upon the lord to say lord we believe you are a loving god you are a healing god we believe that you are a kind god you are a just god <laughs> and now he manifests himself because we have seen the work of the witness we have seen the person of the witness in the lord jesus christ though god is Light. man cannot experience his light without Christ as his witness God is light in him is no darkness and man cannot man needs the light this the Christ is the true light that gives light to every man so God is spirit man cannot receive the spirit of God without Christ as his witness <laughs> the spirit is the reality of God in our life today God is living in us by his Holy Spirit so though God is spirit man needs the spirit of God in him but man cannot 
cannot receive that spirit except Christ bears witness. That's why I said in John 14 that look, I will send the promise of the Father to you, the spirit of truth who will come because we need somebody to tell us of the things of God and as well so that we our heart will be open to receive it. What a joy to the very person of Christ, the witness of God. So witness refers to a person, the testimony refers to their statement or an account of what they, uh, or of the work of another person when they testify about what another person has done for people so the witness relates to the very person while the uh, testimony relates to their account or their record about another person so we can see there are two different areas so still the, the very person is the witness and the account of what they are testifying of another person is their testimony about that other Christ person also testifies to both the person and the work of god so it's not just testifying to the person of god to us as uh, humanity to his redeem is also testifying to the work of god the work of god in eternity past the work of god in creation the work of god in the old testament the work of god in his earthly ministry the work of god in redemption the work of god for us today in the church age the dispensation of grace and also the work of god in eternity future the witness is the lord jesus christ incidentally his name the witness also i love uh, my one of my greatest mentor um the wit witness lee i love his name witness lee the brother witness lee of the living stream ministry christ as the world bears witness to the truth about god so we just need to come back to this anchor part of christ being the witness that is the witness to testify of the truth about god and this was one of the things he had against the sadducees and the pharisees and for their hypocrisy because they said a lot of things or they demonstrated a lot of things about god which wasn't true i mean things that people felt like look uh, the compassionate the merciful side of god was not really depleted or was not shown by their ways of life as uh, the priest of god now christ now comes to talk about the truth of god the loving heart of god even towards sinner who doesn't desire that any sinner should die but should come to the knowledge of the truth christ as the image of god bears witness to god's invisibility colossians chapter 1 verse 15 is the image of the invisible god god is invisible god was an unapproachable light john 1 18 no man has seen god except the son so he is the one that now is the image we could say the uh, the real photograph of god let's put it that way the real photograph quote and unquote because i could tell you a lot of things about somebody and describe things to you in your mind your painting and your your brain is trying to put a picture to it but when you now see a picture you say oh this is the visibility of the invisible person so christ as the image of god is bearing witness to god's invisibility and his visibility as well because god dwells in christ he bears witness to god's glory Hebrews 1 verse 3 is the effulgence of the glory of God. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Hebrews 1 verse 3 is the expressed. Hebrews 1 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, he bears witness to God's glory. So we can see almost every attribute of God, if not all the attributes of God, Christ bears witness of them to us. Christ bears witness to God's wisdom. Mark 6 12. Mark 6 12. They, 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 I mean, they were marveled that, wow, what, where is this man? He didn't even learn from maybe their schools of those days. Mark 1, Mark 6, verse 2. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teaching the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying where did this man get these things from and what wisdom is this which he which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hand so he bore witness to god's wisdom as well he also bore witness to god's power through many things he did and hopefully i didn't skip a page or to god's wisdom i think the power was coming later as the lamb of god he also bore witness to god's good to redeem man is the lamb of god that was slain from the foundation of the world so you can see that even when man was yet to sin god had already made a provision how did we know because christ as the word of god is bore witness to that god has a goal to redeem man what a joy what a joy every day and we are the, which is the ending part of this lecture because part of it is making us see the fact that we are now the living witness of christ everywhere we go we are the ones that uh, we are the visibility of christ everywhere just like christ is the visible was the visibility of god and doing his earthly ministry everything christ is is to bear witness of god everything we have as the redeemer of the lord should be bearing witness to christ because he bore witness to god through his works through his words through everything about him was testifying of god so he everything about christ is christ is the bread of life is to bear witness that god wants to be our food christ is the water of life he wants to bear witness that god is the one that quenches our thirst. christ is 
the word of life, the breath of life, everything that he is, God's goal is that he is actually bearing witness to the truth about the person of God. Also, as the true light that gives light to every man, Christ testifies God to man. He testifies God to man. There is no. It, it testifies God to man that Christ that that Christ is that God is light. We know God is light. We can read about it, but really, if there's nobody to bear witness and to give light to every man, this is John chapter one, I think verse six, seven. That is the true light that gives light to every man. So, in giving light to us, is now testifying the fact that God is light. What a joy! What a joy! The light that lightens every man. He bore witness to God's power through His mighty works, through the great things that He did. People could attest that no, God is real. Even those who don't believe in God, the sinners, their hearts were torn when they saw the mighty deed, the mighty works. Even the Sadducees and the Pharisees, remember in the book of Acts, uh, uh, on the day of Pentecost as well, they saw the things that the apostles were doing in the, the early age of the church. The, and that should be our testimony today, that we are the living witness through the mighty works and mighty wisdom that God is using us to do in life. His spirit bears witness that we are God's children. Romans chapter 8 verse 16, the spirit of Christ bears witness that we are the children of God. The spirit also bears witness that we are the children of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 uh, says that, um, Romans 8 16, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So his spirit in us, the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus Christ bears witness that we are the children of God. Also his human living was a testimony of God. His human living was a testimony of God. Everything that we needed to know about God as it relates to us as man, we can see it in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ because it's the world manifesting in the flesh, the world becoming flesh. Everything we want to talk about the love of God. I mean, what greater love can a man show? <laughs> I, 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 I mean, greater than him dying for us. That shows a loving part. His life was a testimony of God. What a joy. His expressing of God was his witnessing of God. So he is the expression of God. He expressed God everywhere. And even the way, whatever he did was expressing God. And as he was expressing God, he was witnessing God. So we can see that even as he expressed God, expressed, witnessed God by expressing God, express the expression of God, we are also to express him by witnessing him everywhere. Or we witness him by expressing him everywhere. That the indwelling Christ become our outward expression. What a joy. Christ expressing of God, Christ experiencing God was his witnessing of God. That is like he made God real in any place where he was and people could attest to the fact that uh, God is a good God. As God's living witness, he manifests God at all times, everywhere he was going, whether in the grave, manifested the power of God, whether in the house of a sinner, whether in a crusade, whether even in the temple, even when he was being uh, falsely accused, he just kept his silence. <laughs> so you can see every part of his life reading the four gospel that he was, that was Christ's witnessing of God. Those that were accusing him, and later, many of them got saved. <laughs> many of God, when, when we cross over to act, we saw that a great number of the priests as well became people of faith because they saw the mighty works of God and they could tells that look this person is the son of god even the roman soldiers as well that wow when they saw the earthquake and what was happening that truly this is the son of god is the spirit who bears witness to the truth first john 5 6 is the spirit that bears witness to the truth because the spirit is truth as well is the spirit of truth he said i am the way the truth and the life the truth cannot be different from the spirit of truth it is the mystery of the person of christ and the spirit first john chapter 5 verse 6 says this is he who came by water and blood he, jesus christ not only by water but by water and blood and it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth so it's the spirit that bears witness to the truth is the spirit is the witness of god that is greater than the witness of man so if we receive the witness of God, as 1 John 5, I think verse 9 says, that same, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God, which he testified of his son. So he's the witness of God, and also God bears witness of him, and God testifies of him. So if we receive the witness of God, if, if, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. So everything of whatever is from above is always above all. Whatever is from God is always greater than that which is of men. The wisdom of God is greater than the wisdom of men. The report of man is far, far below the report of God. So, who has believed our report? So, even when we are reading 
a doctor could give a report that's the witness of man now we now go back to christ who is the witness of god to receive a greater witness and as we meditate on that witness and thank god that your witness is greater than the witness of men we just begin to see more victories and uh, miracles in our life what a joy to the person of the lord is the spirit the water and the blood that bear witness on the earth first john 5 8 as well the spirit the water and there are three that bear witness on earth the spirit the water and the blood and these three agree as one is the spirit now the lord is the spirit is the water of life nourishing his church by the uh, by the by the water of the world it's also the blood the blood of the lord jesus christ that bear witness on earth mysteriously the person of christ is a mystery it's beyond what our human brain can really comprehend on this side of eternity just as he is god's witness as members of his body we are to be his witnesses everywhere Act one eight that we shall receive the holy ghost after uh, we shall receive the uh, we will receive the power of God after the Holy Ghost has come upon us and we shall be his witness Acts 1 8 everywhere from Jerusalem Acts 1 chapter Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it said but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth that is we cannot be his witness except that we have received the Holy Spirit so as the Holy Spirit comes in our life as believers and as we are filled with the Spirit we become his witnesses everywhere is living witness in everywhere we go to what a joy also as witnesses of christ we are to bear witness of his person and of his works so every part of our life should be witnessing the lord we are his epistles we are his living we are his aroma we are the members of his body the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh we are the visibility of the invisible christ in this world we are his light in the midst of darkness so we are the one to bear witness of everything about his person and his works we can't do it except as much as as we are filled with the spirit it's as the spirit is infilling us that we can be his witness and this is not just a one-time thing that we receive the spirit of god no continuously we are filled with the spirit so that we be his living witnesses imagine a car it has to us to go to the gas station every now and then to refuel so as to be able to be more tolerable if we are to testify of his human living his death his resurrection and his indwelling so we are the ones now testifying that we were not there physically per se when uh, during the earthly ministry of the lord but we have the account of his word and we have a spirit in us to testify that that is true so we are to give and to testify of his incarnation his human living his death his crucifixion his death his crucifixion his resurrection and today is indwelling what a joy that christ is living in us that for us to live is christ that we are the vessels of christ we are the vessels of god that we are uh, we have we have the members of his body so we are to testify of his human living his death his resurrection and his indwelling today what a joy what a joy and also to testify that the lord is coming back as well although christ is god's witness is also mysteriously god himself the mystery of christ so today we'll be able to look at christ as the witness of god we said the witness is needed that uh, a witness is needed because we need to know the truth about a person we need to know their works so god needs a witness to testify about the truth of his person to humanity without christ as a witness of god god could be loved that love will not be made real in our life god could be light that light will not be made real in our life so we need christ as the witness of god to testify of the person of god in our life he is the witness of god's work in eternity past in creation in redemption in eternity future we need him as the witness who talks about the works of god the person of god we can't truly really know god except through christ as his living witness and as christ is the witness of god we are now the ones to be his living witnesses everywhere we go as we are filled with his spirit christ the father is always exalting christ the father testifies of him the word of god testifies the scriptures testifies of christ john 5 39 the spirit of god testifies of christ and we are now the testimony of christ he is the testimony of God said so the spirit of the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ so as we testify of his person as we testify of his work men will come to salvation men will be edified we will be glorified because as Christ is enthroned in the heart of people they can call upon him like he said in Romans chapter 10 where he said that the Lord that there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek that the same Lord is rich towards all that call upon him 
but how shall they call upon him who they have not believed? How shall they believe in how shall they believe ex how shall they call upon him who they have not heard? How shall they hear without a pain? Let me read it very well. Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 14 is one of my favorite parts. How shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How beautiful are those who preach the, the beautiful who preach the good news of the gospel? I say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Christ as the word of God tells us the truth, bears witness to the truth about the person of God. What a joy to the person of Christ. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the witness of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.